An entitled Karen makes my life a living nightmare when I was the IT manager of a company I used to work for. So I decided to get revenge years later by hacking into her email and essentially sabotaging her job, resulting in her getting fired. And I've honestly never felt better about getting revenge in my life. Here's what happened. So I was the IT manager at a small television network. I worked there for about five years until I became disabled for totally unrelated reasons. I worked at the corporate office and it was a pretty good job and I liked it of course but there were a bunch of jerks there. Let's just say that me and the local station manager didn't get along. She would blame all of her problems and why she hadn't got her work done on the computers. If she hadn't done something that her boss told her by email, she would blame me because she didn't get the email. When I upset her because I wouldn't let her do something, like when I banned eBay network wide, she would have her kid load down the receptionist computer with all kinds of spam, malware, and viruses. I had complained about it to the upper management, but she still argued that it was really my fault. Me and my employees could fix every computer at 23 stations, but we could never fix that receptionist computer. After I had to quit for health reasons, I never messed with the company because it was a great job. That is, until a couple of years ago. One day, I was at the grocery store in the produce section, and I had seen some heads of lettuce. And then I thought about the word lettuce, and I remembered that's the station manager's password. Now, I don't know why I remembered that, but you know what? It was time for some fun. After I got home from the store, I took my time, made something to eat, I got a beer, and I comfortably sat down at my computer. We always used our initials in our emails at the company, so it wasn't hard to remember her email because her initials were, of all things, FMB. So I went to the web interface for their email server, I typed in FMB and lettuce, and I logged in. She had not changed her password in over two years, and it was such an easy password to remember. I don't know why I hadn't thought about it before. Maybe I just wanted to forget about her, but that's honestly too bad for her. So I thought to myself, now what? And honestly, I had to think about this for a while. Should I hack into her files on the network servers? No, that's a lot of work. So instead, I looked through her emails. There were some that looked like important documents, some conversations with other employees, and some of them were spam. I thought I would delete all of her emails, but I decided against it. It could look like there was a problem with her email account, and then they might just delete it and create it again, resulting in her probably picking out a new password. So I just deleted one email that looked really important, and then I logged out. So I sat back and I thought about it, and it took me over two weeks to figure out what I wanted to do. And trust me, it was a very enjoyable two weeks, I might add. Now, I am very patient when it comes to messing with other people. I got that from my seriously ornery father. So, I can just delete an important email here and there, but not all of them. Just do it once in a while to start arguments over her email. I can take my time and enjoy this. So, this will be something fun to do every so often. So, every other week on a random weekday, I logged in and deleted an important looking email. Sometimes, I would even delete two of them. This was to establish a consistent pattern of her blaming IT for her garbage, which I am sure didn't stop when I quit. I just wanted to make a more regular pattern, and I did that for about five months. After that, I stepped it up. I started doing it every week, especially every other Thursday night, just so it would look like she was lazy on Fridays. Although not every Thursday, the weeks in between were a random day, so it wasn't so obvious. And I did that for about three more months. Well, one week after enjoying messing with her for the better part of the year, I said screw it, and I deleted an important looking email every single day that week. Well, the following Monday, I couldn't log in, and the email address wasn't there any longer. So I thought to myself, why did her email just get deleted? Well, my suspicions were confirmed when I talked to a friend of mine that still worked for the station manager. She got fired for blaming not getting her work done on IT. And my friend volunteered that information because she knew that I would love to hear it, even though I didn't tell my friend that I'm the reason she got fired. But as a bonus, my friend, the assistant station manager, got promoted to the station manager position. So it was great that she got fired, but still, I kind of miss messing with her every single week. Wow, that is an awesome form of, like, petty revenge. Because seriously, this came along, like, what, two years later? You seriously sat around and said, okay, we're gonna do this, and you plotted out exactly how you were gonna do this with, like, this slow burn technique? Like, that is hilarious to me, and I love everything about that. But it's also really funny to see that all these years later, she's still blaming IT for all of her problems. Like, everything that she can't do, she's always looking to IT and being like, wait, no, it's their fault. But in reality, it's her own fault. She literally just can't do her job. So honestly, good for you for getting back at her for treating you so poorly when you work there. Her behavior and attitude is completely unacceptable. And I think it's really funny that you took her down in such a roundabout way. If you 
like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. I kicked out my best friend from my house after she treated me like garbage by invading my personal space, going through my personal banking account, and mistreating my dog. And now I feel awful because I've lost a really good friend, and at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So as the title says, last week I kicked what I thought was a good friend out of my house because I can no longer take her antics. And honestly, I just wanted to get this out of my system. My friend Kendall and I met in university in 2016. Kendall is not her real name. We studied different majors, but we were from the same department. So we share many classes together and bonded over our passion for gaming and memes. Upon graduation, Kendall moved back to her hometown due to COVID and found a job there. And we kept in touch online through Instagram. About three years later, Kendall told me she found a better paying job in the city, so she's planning to move out of her parents' place. When I asked her about her plans on her accommodations, she replied by saying, well, that's the thing. I was going to ask if you have an extra bedroom that I could move into. For context, I've inherited an apartment from my late grandfather, which is a nice three-bedroom, two-bath near the city center last January, and I currently live there since it is closer to my workplace, and it has all the convenience of public transport. After some thinking, I thought that there's no harm in living with Kendall since I considered us as close as friends. We discussed the terms of the rent and a week later, Kendall moved into my apartment. And you know what? It was great at first. My home felt more lively than usual and the thought of going home to a close friend warmed my heart and it gave me a sense of security. Things were okay for a while, but then everything goes downhill super quickly. Kendall started complaining about many things at home, about her work, her savings, and how she feels homesick. At first, I was very accommodating, thinking maybe she just needs time to get used to the city life. I offered as much help as I can, even to the point of if she's low on money, that I don't mind voiding a month's rent, if that meant I could help her achieve financial stability. I taught her how I save money, how I would live off of my then low salary, with several commitments like my car, my dog, and a student loan. I grew up where my parents expect me to be independent, so I told her things that I would do when I was low on cash, how to get freelance jobs, as well as several other things. But she always seemed to have excuses for every suggestion that I have. Finding a freelance job is too hard. Or how she couldn't let go of her premium junk food, that she isn't willing to cook or meal prep. And I eventually decided to just leave it as it is. After two months of living together, I realized Kendall started treating me as some kind of competition. She would constantly ask me things like how much money I would make a month, while also asking how much job hoppings that took. Anything that she thinks she's better than me at, she'll definitely pop that question to try and figure it out. She boasts about how loyal she is to her awful paying company and how I would never be able to move up the corporate ladder as she called me an industry frog. She once snooped my savings balance and asked me how in the world I had so much money saved up, especially considering all my commitments. Now, mind you, she didn't have a lot of commitments since her parents paid off her student loans and fully paid off her brand new car for her. She then said that maybe I should stop collecting rent from her and that's when I got mad. I told her if she isn't happy living with me, then maybe she should just move out. And when I said that, that's when the crocodile tears started to shed. She said that it was a joke and I didn't have to take her so seriously. She then begged for forgiveness and promised to never snoop on my personal items and details ever again. Well, I let it go once, but she kept bringing things up. She would say stuff like, well, you have the cash and a credit card. And she would say this every time I told her I'd rather stay home because I no longer have a budget to go out and have fun. Comments like these became more frequent when I got a new job six months ago. On top of that, she doesn't clean up after herself. She tried to flirt with my boyfriend and at times parked in my parking space when our initial agreement was that she would find her own parking space if she moves in with her own car, all because my apartment has only one parking lot per unit. The straw that broke the camel's back, though, was when I caught her kicking my dog in his abdomen when I got home from work. I yelled at her and I rushed to check my dog. Luckily, he was fine, but I rushed him to the vet for safety measures. I got home and she sneered that it was just a dog, and as a friend, I shouldn't treat her like that. I asked her why she kicked my dog, but she just didn't even answer me. She shrugged her shoulders and tried to escape into her room. Now, at this point, it was already about a year since Kendall moved in with me, but I finally lost my cool and I told her off, bringing up her problems and how I tried to be nice and accommodating. Then, I told her I'm giving her a week to move out and that from then on I would rather we keep our
our relationship casual, or we don't ever talk at all. Kendall cried and begged me not to kick her out, but soon it turned into her screaming back at me, calling me a bad friend, because apparently in her words, I didn't tell her off on how badly she was behaving. There was a lot of back and forth, which I don't remember what I said, but I remember eventually calling her an entitled brat. She cried again, saying it was uncalled for, and then she stormed off to her room. The next day, I was bombarded with text messages from other university friends, some of them calling me selfish, and others sympathizing with my situation. Apparently, Kendall posted our argument on Facebook and Instagram, painting me to be the bad guy. I was upset at first, but I decided that after Kendall moved out, we would no longer be friends, as well as those who took her side of the story and condemned me. Well, last week, Kendall left, and I have changed the locks on my apartment. I curled up in bed and cried myself out, probably from the sadness of losing a friend, or maybe I'm finally letting out all of the frustrations. I am definitely still grieving about the loss of a friend, as I've had many good times with Kendall. For now, I want to focus on myself, and hopefully I will eventually get over this. Yeah, this Kendall person sounds like an awful individual. It doesn't sound like a good friend, and it seems like as soon as they moved in with you, their true colors definitely came out. It's one thing to have a friend and be on good terms with them for the most part, but it really is an entirely different experience to live with them, because you learn very quickly if they're a good roommate or not. And honestly, from the looks of it, Kendall is definitely not a good roommate. I really think you did the right thing by kicking her out of the house, and if I'm being completely honest, the fact that she kicked your dog is like more than enough reason to kick her out of the house. Like her weird comments and even snooping through my personal items, I could get past all of that eventually, but the second you hurt my dog is the second the gloves are off. Like at that point, there's no mercy and you've just gotta go. So truly, good for you for putting your foot down and deciding that she has gotta get out of your house because Kendall did not sound like a good person. And I totally understand that you lost a friend, but I think the peace you're gaining in exchange for this awful person will totally be worth all the trouble of getting her out of the house in the first place. I refuse to invite my stepsister to my wedding as she was such an awful bully growing up as teenagers. But now, as a result, my father is saying that he's not going to be going either unless I involve my stepsister in my wedding. And right now, I'm not sure if I'm the jerk or not. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. My father remarried when I was 14 years old. His wife, Mary, and his stepdaughter, Kayla, were nightmares in my life. Kayla and Mary are not their real names. My father is wealthy, so we used to go to a fancy school. Kayla was very mean to me, and I had a hard time to the point that I had to move to another school because I simply couldn't take it anymore. One time, she convinced my father and Mary that I was pregnant, and it was so embarrassing because I hadn't done that yet, if you know what I mean. And yet still, she and Mary convinced my father that I should do a pregnancy test. Well, after it came back negative, she told some of her friends at school who are one year ahead of me that I got rid of the baby, if you know what I mean. And you know what? This bullying was nonstop. She would do anything to make my life miserable. Once, she paid one guy at school to start a rumor that I did nefarious things on a certain guy during class. And when I was already going to another school, she told everybody at my old school that I left because I was caught stealing at the mall and that now I was in a youth detention center. My parents had split custody, so I used to spend one week with my father and one with my mom. After two years of this nightmare, I told my dad that I wouldn't want to stay at his place anymore and that our relationship was reduced to two weekends a month. My relationship to my father was non-existent during college days. He would send me money and call me once every month, and that was maybe about it. I went to his house one or two times during my five years in college. I then started dating my fiancé four years ago, and I only introduced him to my father after more than two years of the relationship. I'm now getting married this spring, and we're going to marry at the beach in another country in Europe. Both of our families are wealthy, and we decided to offer the stay at the hotel for our guests, and that they'll pay for their own tickets. Because of that, we decided to settle on a small number of people to attend, maybe around 80 people, and of course, Kayla is not one of them. The wedding plan started three months ago, and my father knew I wasn't going to invite Kayla. However, he flipped out now, and said that I need to invite her. But I said I'm not going to invite a person that I don't have a single good memory with to such a big day in my life. And you know what? We've been fighting about it ever since then. This last week, he told me that I shouldn't count on his money if Kayla isn't invited, with my mom basically saying that she'll pay for everything. After that, he said he's not coming to the wedding without Kayla, and I replied by saying, fine, stay home then. My grandmother and my aunt are trying to convince me to invite Kayla simply for the sake of our family, but to be completely honest, I'm not even sure if we 
we are a family. So honestly, I need to know, should I invite Kayla, even knowing that this is one of the biggest days of my life and she still makes me angry to this day? Am I the jerk if I refuse to invite her? What should I do? I don't think you're the jerk at all and honestly, if I was in your shoes, there is no way I would ever invite Kayla to this wedding. She made your childhood and your life a living nightmare. She spread false rumors about you through your entire high school career and honestly, she sounds like an absolutely awful individual. Always tried to like find some kind of angle to put you down and treat you like garbage. And it really sounds like your dad and your stepmom didn't do anything to make it better. Like here you are suffering and dealing with this garbage all the time and nobody's stepping in to try and make things right. Like that in my opinion is so tragic and it shows pretty blatantly that your dad clearly favors Kayla over you. And obviously his reaction to Kayla not going to the wedding is so blown out of proportion it's not even funny. He literally only wants Kayla to be at the wedding just so he can try and save face. And he also just doesn't like the fact that you're putting up boundaries about what you do and don't want at your wedding. Because I really think you have the right idea here. Kayla 100% would try to ruin your wedding if she had the chance. Because if she's willing to do that in high school, then I can guarantee you she would try to do that again. I'm also not totally convinced that Kayla has matured at all. Like sure, maybe she's grown up in some kind of way and she's seen the error of her ways and she's like grown as an individual. But until she goes to you to apologize and seek your forgiveness or quite literally show that, hey, I'm a better person now. Look, I'm changing or something along those lines, some kind of effort to show that she's different now, that in my opinion, I agree with you for not wanting her in your life. Because as far as I'm concerned, that is not someone I would consider family. And if I was in your shoes, there's no way she would ever be at my wedding. Am I the jerk for not allowing my friends to drink alcohol in my house? Because right now they are freaking out on me, claiming that I'm a bad person for not allowing them to get drunk at my house. Here's what happened. Okay, so I'm a 37 year old female and I do not permit alcohol in my house and I haven't allowed it for at least 15 years now. There is a lot of alcoholism in my family and in my late teens and early 20s, I was a problem drinker. Fortunately, I realized before things became too bad and have not drunk a single alcoholic drink ever since. I don't object to others around me drinking. I just won't do it myself and I don't want it in my house. All of my family and friends are aware of this and the reasons why. So anyways, a group of my friends and I enjoy playing board and card games. We have decided to have game nights once a month, taking turns to host in our homes. The first two were fantastic and we really enjoyed ourselves. Some people were drinking alcohol and others weren't. My time is coming up and in making the preparation, I reminded people that I don't allow alcohol in my house. But if they wanted to bring non-alcoholic beer or wine, then that's okay. And I could make up a few different cocktails that are non-alcoholic. I thought that would be a reasonable compromise and that people would be fine with not drinking for a three-hour event. But unfortunately, that was not the case. Two people from the group were extremely unhappy with that. They said that whilst they were aware of my house rule, they just thought that I meant I don't want alcohol in my house and that I wouldn't object to others bringing some. I don't know where they got that idea because all events in my house they have come to were alcohol free. They also said that not permitting them to bring alcohol was inappropriate and showed that I was a bad host and a bad friend. We did end up getting into a pretty petty argument where they said I was being a hypocrite for not letting them drink because I was practically an alcoholic at one point and if I can't still be around alcohol after all these years then I'm the one that needed help. I responded and said that if they can't go three hours without drinking then it was them that actually needed the help. We tried not to get the others involved in the argument because we didn't want them to feel like they needed to take sides but the argument ended up going from an in-person one to an argument on our friends group chat. This has of course led to people taking sides even those friends who are in the group chat but don't attend the game nights. Now, at this point, I'm thinking of withdrawing from game nights, mostly because of all the fighting. I still don't want alcohol in my house, but other people have been saying that I'm in the wrong for not complying with our country's social norm of drinking alcohol at events and parties. Others have said that there is nothing wrong with me having boundaries and that people shouldn't automatically expect to be allowed to drink alcohol at every event. I don't really know what to think about it because they are right that we live in a very huge drinking culture and it is pretty normal to drink at events instead of not drinking. So honestly, am I the jerk in this situation? What should I do? No, you are definitely not the jerk. For starters, this is your house. That means that your rules are the ones that people have to follow. And it doesn't matter if anybody has any objections to them. They literally have no say in the matter. They can either listen to your house rules or they can leave. And personally, I'm a big believer in that. So the fact that they would say, oh, 
oh, you're a bad person for not letting us get drunk at your house, as well as all these other terrible things. All of that, in my opinion, is so uncalled for, and it is completely unjustifiable. Like, literally, they shouldn't be acting like that, and they shouldn't be ostracizing you, all because you're trying to change and stay sober. And you know what? You've got it right. If they can't spend three hours without getting drunk or having a drink, then they're the ones with a problem. You, on the other hand, have had sobriety for about 15 years, and you don't even want the temptation of falling backwards and losing all that progress. So in my opinion, I think your friends are massive jerks for acting this way, and I don't blame you for wanting to pull back from their game nights. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.